sharp. Don't be scammed. Understand risk. Don't believe experts. And don't be a s Hello. Welcome back to uh, Oros Digest. Today I have a question for you. Are you a Cytonair? Why are you a Cytonair? This is one of the biggest bullshit that I, f I fell for. The numerous complaints that have been made by some investors at Cyton Investments who accuse the firm of failing to honor its contracts. And I'm going to read this straight uh, to you. So in August 20th, 2019, uh, there is video between Edwin Dande and Caroline uh, Mutoko on their, in one of the developments by Cyton. And they're discussing about real estate and who is a Cytonair. And it's like, who is a Cytonair? Cytonairs are individuals who are not measured by a figure in the bank. Look at that hook. You're not measured. <laughs> so being and then by a mindset that sets them apart. Yeah. They create wealth by thinking and investing sharp. See that? And then they are individuals who do not let market trends define their returns. They navigate odds to reach their goals. They invest fast and spend later. They look at property and investments through the eyes of experts because they know that creating wealth is not a game of chance. It takes steady investments with the right choice. Invest sharp. Become a Saitonaire today. Oh, how lovely does it sound? But everything that's said here, it is not. Because they say that you should be able to look at property through the eyes of experts. I don't think they are. And here's a story. So I look at this story about Saitonaires and how there's this opportunity of making money and how great it was. And there was an offer. After watching this video, I got this link. Uh, sorry, it wasn't a link. It was an uh, inbox on LinkedIn from a lady who worked there as a financial uh, advisor and said, if you invest more than a million shillings, you get a 20% uh, return year on year on your money as long as you lock it for three years. And it sounded very great. And uh, I loved it. So uh, there's this website called Wazua, which is, I love it. It's very great for you know, discussing financial matters and everything that has to do with investments. So I found a lot of people were arguing about how it's not possible to make 20% uh, in the Kenyan market. But then those other people like, hey, there's this guy called Edwin Dande. He just came from Goldman Sachs. I think, was it Goldman or JP Morgan? Oh, I don't know which one. And you know, he's, he's, he's an investment whiz and he has found a way of bypassing banks uh, so that he doesn't have to raise money from banks or get a loan from banks. He'll raise it directly from the masses and then take that money put it into real estate and then make your, it makes his cut and give you back a healthy 20%. And there are videos all around about how, you know, banks are giving you 7%, 10% on fixed deposit. Banks being greedy. Just give me your money. You know, I am the wizard. I'm the expert in uh, real estate. Oh boy, oh boy. You know, falling for credentials. Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, we don't know which one and you know worked at britain so what can go wrong all right there's nothing can go wrong and then i went and took my hard earned saved for six years a million shillings and i was like this sounds like good investments you know what let me write do an rtgs to stand chat there is the confirmation that was so i sat back and waited for the cash to come in start flowing so for about two years, for every six months, I still receive money to my bank account, which felt so nice. Just laying in the cart, getting all, ripping the benefits of your uh, investments. And then just when COVID was getting into its intense phase, I had, I think it was about one month, the maturity of my three year investment. And now I was supposed to not get my principal back and the final uh, interest. Then I get a, an email from Cyton, which was like, oh, we're able to make payments. What we do, we'll roll over uh, the principal plus the investment, uh, plus, plus the interest. 
into another six months. And I was like, okay, doesn't sound too bad. So they're going to, so now it's been the principal plus the interest will make up the new principal plus another 20% that you're going to have. And I was like, okay, not so bad. Then, you know, still reading around about people making murmurs about Saiton not being able to fulfill their uh, obligations, their contractual obligations, and then it's until the six months ended, you know, I was out of a job, I needed the money, and I was like, can I just get, you know, get something back, even the interest? So I decided to be patient. So after the six months, they're like, we're going to roll this over for another six months. I was like, nah, 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 something must be completely wrong uh, here. I was like, okay, are we going to get anything out of this? So I went back and I started, started doing what I was supposed to have done before making the investment, which was looking at what could have gone wrong, what is it like to have gone wrong at Cyton. And then I learned one thing. It's called a liquidity squeeze. See, what Saturn did was they raised money and then let's say they raised five billion. Instead of taking that five billion and starting one project and finishing it, they started several projects. Now, these projects cannot be completed because five billion is not enough to complete all these uh, projects. So they need additional funding to complete these projects so that they're able to sell these houses, get their profit and pay you back your interest. So a liquidity, liquidity squeeze means that you don't have capital or you don't have money to pay your investors. You also don't have money to complete uh, the houses. Uh, in banks, they call this a capital adequacy ratio. Banks have to maintain a certain amount of money in relation to the loans they have so that if everyone wants to come and withdraw their money or a good amount of people want to withdraw their money, they can be given their money. So you have investments that are maturing, which means you have to pay back the principal and all the interest, yet you don't have the money. So, and COVID happened, there is no inflow of capital. Everyone is holding their money. The investors, they hope to put in the money are no longer putting in money. They're busy funding vaccines and other problems that they have in their own uh, countries. So you end up with what you call insolvency. You're not able to fund any uh, thing that uh, you have. So what happens? People go to court and say, we want our money uh, back. So in February of this year, uh, the court, high court ruled that Saturn should liquidate uh, all the holdings so that they pay back for that. What that means that all the assets that are being owned by Saturn will be sold away. And then whatever proceeds get that will be paid back to investors. The only problem that you're only going to get 14% of your investment. So out of a million shillings, you get 140K out of the money. So you have been shafted <laughs> out of your own money. And so whose problem is that? The expert. You believe the expert. Because he's supposed to have expertise behind financial management, understanding liquidities and how to maintain the liquidity ratios that you need. But somehow, I think he became too greedy, make too much money too soon. There's a reason why some banks exist for very long. They take less risk. They make less money, but they're stable. It's like a husband. People say that a boring husband <laughs> is stable. <laughs> but the interesting husband, yes, it'll make you happy for a few days, a few years, and then it'll go bust. That's what happened to Saiton. Saiton was the exciting husband. Britam was the <laughs> boring husband. But Britam is still in business. Saiton's arm, real estate arm, is no longer in uh, business. So... What can you learn out of this? Never believe an expert. Never. <laughs> there are no experts in this world. We just have people who have experiences. They're never right. Merge their experience with yours. Make your own decision. Understand risk. I don't think Saturn understand risk. If they understood risk, they wouldn't have over leveraged themselves by 10 projects at the same time. They should have managed their capital flow very well. Third thing, there's something about time. I wish I'd taken a one-year investment. I think I wish I'd taken a six-month investment. Time manipulates risk. What is risky today is not risky tomorrow. 
what's not risk today tomorrow is very risky we hope to sit down put our money in somewhere and then over years we just have returns on it on that never happens so Saturn exploited something which is very close to being a scam like a Ponzi scheme it's not really a Ponzi scheme you know like uh, Charles Ponzi uh, he was an Italian guy who moved to America and got money from the public pretended he was investing in some elaborate investment things and then he was paying people the money from the investors other investors were paying the interest for other investors he's the one whose name he's the one who gave the scheme its name as Ponzi so when we have capital inflows from people and they're using the capital inflows to fund both the interests for maturing investments and the real estate development very close to a Ponzi scheme very close to a Ponzi scheme and I can remember one of the lines I had on email discussions was like this is guaranteed it's backed by real estate it's Nairobi real estate Nairobi real estate never goes bust it's always going up if you love risk there's one thing said there's certain things black swans that you can never predict which means no one could predict covid no one could predict the war in ukraine no one could predict uh, tsunamis etc all those things will knock your investments off <laughs> and you'll never know what hit you for that be sharp don't be scammed understand risk don't believe experts and don't be a cytomare <laughs>